In this video, we're going to explore the velocity and the wavelength of the electron in the orbit other than the innermost orbit, like in the second, third, fourth, fifth energy level. So how do we figure that out? Well, we have the equation for the velocity as a function of the energy level in the radius of the orbit. And here we have the equation for the radius in terms of the energy level squared and, of course, some other variables. And when we deal with the innermost energy level, the velocity is equal to this and the radius is equal to that, also known as the Bohr radius. All right, so let's now find the equation for V1. So V1 is equal to N1, or I should just say 1 for N. So that would be 1 times H bar over MR. And we know that this is going to be equal to 2.185 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. All right, so what would be the velocity for the second energy level? Well, let me say, well, V2 is going to be 2 times h bar divided by m but now we have a problem here this is now going to be the radius of the second energy level and we don't know yet what that is so if r2 is of course the same as r1 and maybe we write r1 here then of course it would be twice that velocity but we don't expect that because we would expect that the farther out you go the, the slower the velocity will be all right let's find the radius of the second orbit over here, we could say, well, the radius for the second orbit, or maybe first we'll, we'll write down the radius of the first orbit. So the radius of the first orbit is equal to 1 squared times h bar squared divided by m k e squared. And we know that this is equal to 0.053 nanometers. And notice that there's no other variable that will change with a change in radius. The only thing that will change is, of course, the n the quantum number n, and everything else will stay the same, which means that R2 will be 4, or maybe I'll write it like this, will be 2 squared times h bar squared over m k e squared. And since this quantity right here is equal to the Bohr radius, what that means is that this will be equal to 4 times 0 0.053 nanometers. So what that means is that the radius is now four times the original radius, which means the radius to the second orbit is four times the radius to the first orbit. When we plug that number in here, we can say that V2 is equal to two times h bar over m times 4r1. And then if I write it a little bit different, I can say this is equal to two over four times h bar over m times r1. And h bar over mr1 right here is equal to this quantity right there. So we can say that this is equal to 1 half 2.185 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So what we can see here is that the velocity of the, in, of the electron in the second orbit is only going to be half the velocity of the electron in the first orbit. And the radius of the second orbit is going to be four times the radius of the um, of the first orbit. And likewise, if we then continue, we can then see that R3 is equal to 3 squared times h bar squared over m k e squared. And of course, this is equal to the Bohr radius. So we can see here that for the third orbit, it's 9 times 0 0.053 nanometers. And what would be the velocity in the third orbit? OK, we can say V3 is equal to 3 times h bar over m times 9r1 because in the third orbit it's nine times the radius of the first orbit and so we could say that this is equal to 3 over 9 times h bar over mr1 and of course h bar over mr1 that is the radius of the Bohr atom for the innermost orbit so this is equal to one third times uh, zero Oh, one third times 2.185 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So what we're discovering, discovering here is that if we go further and further out from the innermost orbit, the second orbit, third orbit, and so forth, the velocity will be one half, one third, one quarter, one fifth, one sixth, and so forth. And the radius will be four times the initial radius, nine times the initial radius, and of course the next one will be 16, 16 times the original radius, 25 times the original radius and so forth. So again, what we can say is that V sub n is equal to 
um, n times, v, well not n, but let me go like this, it'll be 1 over n times v1, and the radius, r sub n, will be uh, n squared times r sub 1. And that's how we find the radius and the velocity of the electron, or I should say the velocity of the electron and the radius of the electron in the various energy levels of the hydrogen atom. And then on the next video, I think what we should do is actually find the energy levels, the actual energy levels in electron volts of the various orbits. And so that will be next one.